Welcome engineers. My name is Travis IQ and today we're going to talk about network segmentation, specifically in the context of IoT devices and small to medium network security. So uh, first and foremost, what we need to talk about is what constitutes network segmentation or how do we segment the network, right? And so the idea is I have hosts on my network and these hosts can communicate with one another intuitively, right? Intuitively, innately. Maybe I have a switch here and I plug a PC and a printer into this switch, right? <clears throat> and this switch is plugged into a router and that router routes us to the internet, to the WAN. Okay, so here we actually do have the, we do have network segmentation going on to some extent. And the extent is we are, the network is being segmented by the router from let's say the ISP, right? To the customer premises equipment, our stuff here. Okay, so what happens then if I need to, plug something else into this network. Something else needs to go onto this network that needs to communicate to devices on the WAN, right? What happens if I need to plug in, let's say, a an IoT device, a camera for security, a smart fridge so that I can know how cold my vegetables are, a smart thermostat, like the Ecobee smart thermostat, a server that manages these things, a home automation utility like Home Assistant, right? These devices running on their own, right? I don't want them with, with limited firmware, Linux and paired to Linux firmwares, right? Oftentimes, if we're not cognizant of the types of devices we're buying and put on our network, and this happens in both the home office environment and in the enterprise environment, if we're not cognizant of this fact, then we may don't, uh, pick up devices that have known issues or companies that don't push out firmware updates when vulnerabilities are discovered and these types of things, very, very common. Also, vulnerabilities are discovered sometimes in um, firmware or packages that were utilized by a number of companies and are pervasive and aren't fixed very much at all. And this happens more often in IoT device um, infrastructures than it does in other infrastructures. This is why I'm focusing specifically on IoT for network segmentation today, right? Okay, so I've established why I would put these on the network. I've established why I don't want them to be on the same network as my main work PC and a server or a printer or some other device that's being utilized for work purposes, for example, right? And so I need a primary LAN and I need, let's say, just in this case, right, a segmented network for IoT devices that is se separated um, from the primary LAN for security purposes specifically. We could, sec we could separate it for a number of other reasons and do quality assurance and policy of the traffic and all these other things. But let's say we're, we're talking specifically about network security and segmentation here. Okay, so there's uh, one way I could do this is I could have two physically separate networks. Right, so I could take and plug all of these devices into a switch or a wireless access point, IoT devices, home assistant, camera, thermostat. I could plug this switch into a router and I could take another interface on that router, connect it to a switch, and then hook up my PC via Cat5 or high throughput fiber, whatever I want to do. Depends upon the data transfer rates I need and some other server over here. And then I could have my WAN connection. In this case, I have a single router acting in my segmentation and security, from my segmentation and security perspective as a router firewall hybrid. And these IoT devices can now communicate to the WAN. If I were to be, you know, if I were out on the WAN, let's say Travis IQ is out here on the on the WAN and needs to talk to his home automation server that is aggregating information from all these other IoT devices. And I forward, I punch a hole in my firewall and forward traffic from 
port 443 to 8123, which is the default port for Home Assistant. And I log in and I get all this information. Now, this server is actually exposed, right? This port is now being forwarded to this service here. And anyone who attempts to connect to my network via that port is going to be forwarded to this service. This is why we set up strong usernames and passwords and multi-factor authentication so that although we understand that this device is exposed and is a potential security risk more so than these other devices here, it is secured and segmented. So we have layers of security and we'll talk about things like defense in depth on this channel at some point as well. Okay, so this is one mechanism, mechanism of segmenting the network. If I needed this server or if I needed this PC to be able to talk to this server, if I were to, in the, in the case of Home Assistant, I needed to update a configuration and the way that I would update configurations in um, Home Assistant is with the config.yaml file. And so I needed to do some config.yaml updates and I wanted to use something like Windows SMB to update the config.yaml file, basically um, Windows server message block so I could connect directly to it like it were a folder on my, on my, on my PC here directly. I could do that. I would have to do one of a few things. I could do whitelisting of those IPs and directions. We'll talk about you know firewall configuration another time. I could um, whitelist an IP and a, and a a port number, and if, or I could do um, established connections. A number of different things, right? But I would have to allow explicitly that connection from this device to this device within that firewall config. You'd say, well, how would you do that, Travis? Well, it would vary from from uh, NOS to NOS, network operating system or firewall operating system to firewall, right? Juniper, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Cisco, PFSense, Untangle, pick your device. Okay, I said I could do this one of two ways. So what's the second way, Travis? Well, I don't have all of my, I don't have a ton of ports sitting off my small router in a, in, a, in a smaller or medium business infrastructure to segment the network like this, right? Usually, especially in a small small office environment, right? I'm gonna have one router or maybe one, one and one set up in high availability um, and redundancy, but let's say one router connected to a big backbone switch in my office. And I've got a bunch of devices connected to this that wanna get out to the WAN. And I've got these IoT devices, IoT, 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 right? And these are going to be on my IoT segment. And then I've got these other devices here, PC, server, backup server, that are going to be on another segment here. I can instead do what is known as virtual segmentation. Virtual means, we use the term logical. Logical means in software. So in software, we define this segmentation. Sorry, I should probably do this in the right color. In software, we, do, we define this segmentation. this and there's a term for this right these are these would be different local area networks at that point right so they would be virtual local area networks or VLANs and so what I can do is I can configure multiple VLANs on this switch switches can segment the network using VLANs and I can associate this PC this server and this server with VLAN five and I can associate my IOT VLAN with VLAN 999 let's say and what this means is they are essentially this is essentially the same as segmenting them with a router right where they have their own networks so that means that they would have their own IP address ranges so this could be the 192.168.1.0 address range and this could be the 192.168.2.0. So one thing that we know about 
separate address ranges right like this right the 192.168.1 and the 192.168.2 is they require a router to communicate with the two and so in this scenario here where i just have a switch let's say i'm not connected to this router right those two those two networks actually can't communicate right because they're separated um, in software in the device and across those boundaries right we would need a router to route to route that traffic and so what we can do is have r1 here route the traffic for us and now we have network segmentation with a device that's not necessarily innately intended to segment the network and we have a device facilitating communication between those networks if we so if we so desire if you're going to set it up like this what you're what you're likely going to have in this case, barring some special specialized cases, is this this router is going to um, prevent communication between these two networks until you explicitly allow it, right? And uh, that would be part of our firewalling functionality. Um, and so we would have firewall rules preventing the connection between these two networks. You would say, well, maybe in some core routers and some um, core implementations, that might not necessarily be the case, and I agree with you. But in our small medium enterprise example here, that's that's that would definitely be the case. And so now you've got your IoT devices, you've got an IoT uh, automation and home automation utility. Hold on, sorry, wrong color. You've got a home automation utility here that sits here too, and I want to manage it with my PC. I still have to punch a hole in this firewall to allow these two devices to communicate. We'll talk about how we would facilitate this and how you... Uh, facilitate inter-VLAN routing with a single router or a router on a stick like this um, with things like sub-interfaces and stuff like that at a later date. But as of now, this is sufficient for our discussion of network segmentation. If you'd like to see more discussion of cybersecurity topics, networking topics, and network and installation topics, like and subscribe. If you have any questions about it, comment below and I'll answer as many as I see. Um, if not, engineer, break stuff, and have fun.